Hi guys, today we're going to react to The Watcher by Arch Enemy. This is a Buy Me A Coffee request by Dan W60. Thanks, Dan, for yet another request. Thank you, Dan. Again, we appreciate the support. As soon as the bass dictated the rhythm in the, in the exposition and you knew something awesome was coming, it's engaging from, from the first second. I loved it. She comes out full throttle, screaming. Also, the video is amazing. The fast editing and the entire complement to the level of energy that comes out of the music, just amazing. You could say that it's a, almost a sort of a standard live, you know, massive live event kind of performance yeah. video but the editing is really really good it does really work here it's pretty fantastic we've covered them before with a uh, handshake from hell i think and uh, we were sort of introduced to alisa white glues and i think she's got it in bunches you know she's got the voice but she's also got a presence she did just come out and take over pretty much and she's uh, really fascinating to watch live in the other song in, in handshake from hell we um we heard her use her sort of more regular pleasant voice as well as the scream and growl here we're, we're only getting one side of things but it is uh, awesome as as we were going through it like the 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 video i'm listening to the song and i'm thinking oh crap i know this song i didn't know it was arch enemy i, I don't yeah but i but i but i know the song and yeah it's just got a really sort of catchy uh chorus to it and and it's something that sticks with you as as it obviously stuck with me and i'm not even sure where i heard it but i know that i've heard it before very very cool track i really like this one yeah, yeah i did too I'd, I'd put this in an edgar wright action sequence i don't know why but that's what i put it the lyrics i think are a bit cryptic i didn't quite understand i mean i understood what i was reading i didn't understand the meaning behind them i can only derive certain conclusions i could be wrong or right they talk about uh, uh some sort of archangel or angel who's uh who's watching over them and they are rebelling against the scrutiny that watcher dictates having them always checked, having them uh, prohibited from doing certain things. And that's what I got so far, at least. I don't know if they're prohibited because the Watcher um, is an observer. Um, so I don't think, you know, forbids or anything, but they do get judged on it, which yeah. might be punished. So, yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm, I think it's not so much cryptic. I think it's just kind of referential. Like it, it, it references some, some, uh, uh, things we might not be entirely, uh, you know, aware of. Um, but as far as I know, watchers are are some kind of um, angels that that get sent, you know, down to earth to observe and report. Of course, I'm getting, you know, most of my knowledge on this from the show Supernatural. <laughs> yeah, it uh, it does have many correlations. Yeah. yeah. So um, that that's sort of what what it brought up to me, and as far as I remember. Uh, from the show, um, there's uh, the Book of Enoch, I think, refers to to a lot of this. And and those uh, uh, watchers 
were supposed to be, um, you know, observers and, and report and not, not to interfere in any way whatsoever. But I can't remember what exactly happened and for what reason, but some or one or a few, I can't, I can't remember, actually went ahead and had uh, relations with uh, human women and produced offspring who were the Nephilim. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you, Supernatural, for that. Um, aside for that, I'm not too sure about the specifics. Um, but yeah, it looks like they're talking about uh, uh, you know, a watcher who's always watching what we're doing and how we're doing it, and he's always uh, sort of sitting there in judgment, I guess in quiet judgment. Um, there was a line, offspring of divine regret. Um, it feels like uh, becoming a watcher or being sent as a watcher is a form of punishment for those angels. They don't get to stay in heaven and, and do whatever it is that angels do. It was sent down here and they can't even interfere or do anything. Um, and act on their judgment. They're just supposed to uh, observe and report. A sentinel from the skies above. So the rebel angel, they say. So something happened upstairs and they were sent down here to um, observe. <laughs> When the song started, it was mayhem. It was good mayhem, the type of mayhem that we love listening to. 
and then it turned into more mayhem. I, I can't really. It, they they revved up the already fast pace that they had. Uh, that guitar solo just blew me away. I love listening to those types of things in these songs. Just a marvelous display of, of proficiency and, and precision. I, I really, really, really enjoyed it. And they're like a force of nature. The video, everything, everything in it. What an amazing experience must it have been to be in that concert. The first time we reacted to Arch Enemy was, was the first time because I mm -hmm. had no idea like that I've heard this song before. Um, but like the more we get to to know Arch Enemy as a band and you know what they do and how they do it, the more I'm becoming a fan. This is friggin' fantastic. Yeah, it is. It's like four something minutes of insanity. Very visceral experience of of what they have in their arsenal. I keep trying to imagine what it's like to keep that level of concentration for that type of song, not just coming from Arch Enemy, but from from those types of bands that do this. So much goes into. A single second of playing. And again, having only uh, uh, reacted to them twice now, this is the second time. Mm -hmm. We don't really know what else they have in store, but yeah. this was a great demonstration of capability. So yeah, yeah. that was pretty, pretty great. But yeah, now that we got to the end of it, um, what do you think about, uh, about lyrics and meaning here? The song felt rebellious. I just couldn't connect the dots. But if I have to correlate it to things in reality, I'd say that they have qualms with either limitations and scrutiny coming from religion and or societal limitations but i couldn't really point my finger at something i just know the general idea uh, of what i would correlate it to if you step out of line you get punished by law or by god because there were references to the flood beware the watcher the earth is erased in flood which takes you back to of course you know yeah. noah and it's like a reminder of you know if you if you step out of line this could happen but yeah, there's something that that kind of feels like this might be a little bit of social commentary as well you know about um, sort of a theme of judgment and being watched over whether it's big brother or whether it's uh, you know just other people in society watching and judging it's like you're being born into some kind of hostility these days because of I guess social media and and that ability to just judge everyone from your home office chair or your couch or you know from your laptop and everybody gets to do that today they can just be a watcher they can just put you know their their judgment and and how they see things and put it out there for you know report let's say to to others as you know what what they see and 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 how they think things are there was a line in the song that really struck me and it said um does the observer make reality is reality what is being observed or what is being reported you know and that just takes me to you know, the way things are today with whatever people are, are telling other people they think about what they see and propaganda and things like that and and which is true because today everybody accepts what they're being told either by other people or by the news or by whatever else as truth without you know looking into it the following line was an interesting one it said does the gaze activate quantum complicity it poses that as a question it's a beautiful line yeah quantum complicity yeah. it's a beautiful line that means everything for once you determine something that to, to be your truth it becomes tr it becomes true to to every direction in the past and, uh, future it, present yeah yeah and and it it also you know took me back to film school whenever talking about the gaze of the watcher you know the mm -hmm. the viewer and i guess that's that's part of it as well here you know because uh, uh with uh, artists with uh, whoever you know yeah. is out there on on social media on television or whatever the audience gets to make judgment these days yeah, and, and I I don't know if this was sort of like to look at it as a, as flipping it that way, you know, about the gaze and and the complicity and other things, you know, if you are the viewer and you take the propaganda on as truth, are you complicit in that? It just it raises a lot of questions. It's it becomes very philosophical if you yeah. kind of dive into it and try yeah. to take it apart. Um, just very very interesting song and yeah. and yeah, just gets the brain firing in all kinds of directions. And we don't know if any of them are, are, you know, relevant. Yeah, yeah. Also, as the viewer, the interpretation of what you've been told, say the observers tell you what they see. So it's your decision to make it, oh, I can take this observation and, and think about it, or to take it as preaching. Because when the observers tell you what they see, you might turn it into your new truth. There's danger in that. And the watcher, the sentinel, an observer, all of these to me are also other names for, you know, news providers 
these yeah. days in newspapers and other shows and magazines and whatever else. Um, so it kind of made me think, you know, did they write it thinking in that direction as well as giving it that double meaning, that subtext? Or was it just about telling the story about this sort of uh, biblical watcher uh, character and, you know, and, and the reaction to them being around? Yeah. Well, it's a conclusion that I I can't say I can come to. I honestly don't know. It's uh, yeah, me either. Yeah. I, I just think it's interesting to to think about, you know. Yeah. Um, also, what I referred to earlier, and I said that these watchers uh, went and had relations with human uh, uh, females and had these uh, uh, children who were the Nephilim. There's a line there. It said, um, "Writhing with the Nephilim, behold fire and blood, offspring of divine regret, condemn thy daughters to death." So it is about. The women, I don't know if they died when they gave birth or mm. something along those lines, but it, it went ahead and talked about the Nephilim, which I had no idea was... Uh, uh, Absolutely, divine regret, as, as, in, as in people with all, their, with all their gifts, they were a mistake. They're proclaimed as mistakes. Divine regret, yeah. that was... Uh, yeah. A ah, very, very cool song. And um, yeah, just another amazing display from, from a powerhouse band, I think. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. This needs to percolate, at least for me. I, I, I didn't really get a well-rounded opinion from listening to it. Yeah, and and again, you know, about meaning and stuff like that. You know, we can we yeah. can take away whatever we 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 want out of it. You know, it doesn't mean it's it's it can be right. It can be completely wrong. Uh, but the fact that it raises these kinds of thoughts and questions is what makes it interesting, in my opinion. When one looks at religion as a scrutinizing set of rules, you can't really say that about religion without lumping society into that too, because society isn't perfect. No person on earth will, will tell you, yeah, society is, is awesome, it's great, I love society. Everybody's going to find problems in society that have to do with that kind of judgment. If we are good, are we only good because we know we're being watched and we might be punished? You know, yeah. if we weren't watched uh, uh, and there was a possibility of uh, of retribution, would we just, you know, all hell will break loose or or not? So thank you to Dan W60 for this request. Another awesome one. And as always, Dan, we appreciate the support. Thanks, Dan. Wonderful choice. Uh, we enjoyed reacting to it very much. Keep them coming, please. If you enjoyed this episode, guys, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and click the little bell icon so you'll get notified on all our future videos. If you have a request you'd like bumped up the line, please make it through Buy Me a Coffee. All contributions are, of course, very much appreciated. Thank you all for sticking with us. Thank you all for your time. It's good to know that Beelzebub knows who to possess in order to make good music. Her growl is 50% scary, 50% mesmerizing because it's so on point. She actually feels like a non-human entity. Thank you, guys. We appreciate the support. Um, we'll be back in a couple of days with a new episode, and we hope to see you then. Thanks again. Bye for now. Bye, guys.